So what is a binary ionic compound? Well, ionic just means that it contains a cation and an anion. A binary compound contains two and only two elements. So a binary ionic compound is a compound that has a cation, that's just an, a monatomic cation, and an anion that's a monatomic anion. When you write an ionic compound, the cation always goes first on the left, and the anion always goes last on the right, in both the name and the formula. It's really easy to say or write the name of an ionic compound. You just say the name of the cation followed by the name of the anion. And there are just a few things to watch out for. Remember that monatomic anions have their endings changed to IDE, and with cations, you have to watch out for those Roman numerals. Use them when you're supposed to, but don't use them if you're not. So, starting out pretty simple, we want to name this compound right here. So we recognize it as an ionic compound because it contains a cation and an anion. Well, how do we know this is a cation? Because it's a metal. And when metals combine with nonmetals, they generally form cations, and the nonmetals form anions. So sodium is a metal. Chlorine chloride is a nonmetal. So the sodium cation we know is a plus one charge. And again, we know that from either because we know it's in the first column of the periodic table or you've memorized that chart that I showed you in the previous video. And the same thing for the chloride anion. We know it has a negative one charge because it's a halogen or because we memorized that, that periodic table with the charges that I showed you last video. The name of the sodium cation is just sodium. The name of the chloride ion is just chloride, so we just call this sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Watch out for cations with Roman numerals, though. That, that trips people up all the time. Make sure you always check when you're doing the nomenclature of a binary ionic compound that when you look at the metal, the metal's going to be the cation. Check and see if it, it's supposed to have a Roman numeral or not. The other thing that's going to be useful when we're writing down formulas for binary ionic compounds is that the total charge in that compound that comes from the cations, the total positive charge from the cations, plus the total charge from the anions must equal zero. Or we have to have the same amount of positive charge as we have negative charge um, in an ionic compound. Now, I, I said it a little bit differently here. We said the total charge from the cations plus the total charge from the anions must equal the overall charge. I'm looking ahead later on, we're gonna see some compounds where the overall charge isn't zero. We have compounds that have a charge, and then this, we're gonna come back and, and use this. But for now, all the ionic compounds we see will have zero charge. So the, basically the positive charges from the cations must equal the, the negative charges from the anions. You'll see this in just a second. So, let's say we want to name this compound right here. Well, Ti stands for titanium. This is chlorine, chloride. Titanium is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal, so we know it's an ionic compound. There's only two elements, so it's binary ionic. Now, titanium, do we need a Roman numeral? Well, it's not one of the ones that was listed, so yes, we do need a Roman numeral for it. Chloride, we know it has a negative one charge, and Here's what we do. There's two ways you can look at this, and either way, whatever works for you is fine. Because we're, we have three chloride ions, we have a total of three, one, two, three negative charges. We have to have three positive charges. There's no overall charge in this compound. And because there's only one titanium atom, it must bear all three positive charges by itself. And so we know that titanium has a plus three charge, and knowing that we have to use the Roman numeral to say its name, we say titanium three and the name for this is just chloride, so it's titanium-3 chloride. Now, there's a shorter way to do this, a little bit shorter if you like formulas, equations. Um, this is saying what I said on the previous slide, that is that the sum of the charges from the cations plus the sum of the charges from the anions must equal the overall charge, which is zero. So we have one titanium atom, three chloride ions, so that's, that's the three comes from here. The negative one here comes from the negative one on each of the chloride ions. So what it, this stands for whatever the charge is on titanium, plus, minus three, three times negative one is negative three equals zero, or titanium is plus three, and that tells us the charge on titanium, titanium is plus three, and thus its name is titanium three, and the compound is called titanium three chloride. So what about this guy? Well, 
vanadium, V, is a metal. Oxygen is a nonmetal, so it's an ionic compound, binary ionic compound. So vanadium, do we need a Roman numeral? Well, yeah, it's not on that list of ones that only form one charge, so we're going to have to figure out what its charge is. Oxide, oxygen is oxide, and we know that it has a ne each oxide has a negative 2, going back to that periodic table with the charges on it, or because we know which column this is in, the same thing. And, okay, either way, we have two oxide ions, each has a negative 2, so we have a total of four negative charges. We only have one vanadium, so once more that metal must bear the whole positive charge all by itself. So it has to have four positive charges here, because we have four negative charges here. And so we call this vanadium 4 oxide. We need the Roman numeral because vanadium can form more than one type of cation. Or, if you use a formula, the charge on vanadium plus 2 times the negative 2 on each oxygen oxide equals 0. Vanadium, the charge on vanadium minus 4 equals 0. The charge on vanadium is plus 4, which means it's vanadium 4 oxide. Now, okay, so what we've just been doing is going from the formula to the name. We're also going to need to go from the name to the formula. So let's look at this, aluminum oxide. Well, aluminum has a, is a metal, and it's going to, in oxide is a nonmetal, and oxide is the name of an anion, O2 minus. And so we know that aluminum is a cation, with a po and we know it ha that it has a positive 3 charge, again, because of that table that I showed you. And so now, to get the formula, there's two ways to do this. The idea is that the total, again, the sum of the positive charges must equal the sum of the negative charges because there's no overall charge here. Each aluminum has a plus 3, each oxide has a negative 2. One way to do this is to do, do this little x. If we take the number, not the charge, just the number, the 3, from the cation and put it as a subscript for the anion, and the same thing, take the number, not the negative sign, but just the 2 from the oxide, put it as a subscript for the metal, the aluminum, we get the formula, Al2O3. The only thing to watch out for here when you're doing it this way with this little x is that if you get numbers that have a common denominator greater than 1, you have to divide them to get the smallest ratio. So if we got a 3 here and a 3 here for some reason, we'd have to divide them by 3 to get 1 and 1, something like that. Or if we got 6 and 3, we'd have to divide them by 3 and get 2 and 1. Now another way of doing this is to say, okay, so I have a 3 positive and a negative 2. What's the least common multiple of 3 and 2? Well, it's 6. And so we just take the, the least common multiple, divide by the charge on each aluminum, and, that, and we get 2. So that tells us that there's two aluminums. Take the, the least common multiple, divide by the charge on each oxide. 6 over 2 is 3. That tells us there are three oxides. And so the formula would be Al, Al2O3. So, what about iron 2 sulfide? We want the formula. Well, when you have a Roman numeral, that's really easy because that tells you what the charge is. It's F, iron is Fe. The Roman numeral says that it has a plus 2 charge. Sulfides is sulfur with a negative 2 charge. So when we do the cross, watch out for this guy. If we put a 2 there and a 2 there, it will look like Fe2S2. But this has a common denominator greater than 1, 2. So we can't write Fe2S2. That's wrong. We have to divide these and make it FES. Or, you know, it's really easy if you just look at this. All we have to do is balance the charges. There's already two positives here and two negatives, so we just need one iron and one sulfide, so FES.